They've given me all the tools that I need. I have lights, I have backdrops, I have microphones, I have a computer, I have a work phone. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. My name is Artie and this is my new office. In today's video, I wanna talk about how to find your dream job, how to find that one job that makes you so happy that you wake up every single day, ready to go to work and do the thing that you're passionate about. Okay, so those of you that have been following my channel, you've seen that I was fat and then I got skinny and then I started traveling a lot and then I met my wife in Poland and now we live in Poland. I spent literally the last year doing absolutely nothing. I spent time with my family. I was living off of my savings. I was thoroughly just simply enjoying my life. At the same time, I was trying to get acclimated to Poland, learning the language, getting more comfortable with it having interactions with people here. It's completely different than the United States. But over the course of this year, I started to run out of money. So I immediately went back to what I knew and that's rideshare. Here they have Uber and a company called Bolt. So I started driving for Bolt and I was making good money doing that. So obviously the currency is different here, but I was making about 1500 zloty every single week driving rideshare, but it was like 60, 65 hours a week and it wasn't very fun. But what happened was the reason I stopped doing rideshare is that gas prices out here are almost five times what they are in the United States. Now I'm fortunate because my car drives on liquid propane gas, but it also mixes with fuel. And with the bonus structure with Bolt, it was actually paying for my gas while giving me a little bit of extra incentive to keep working. And then one day randomly, they just got rid of those bonuses and it was literally the worst thing they could have done because it was no longer cost effective for me to drive. I was making such little amount of money driving so many hours that it'd be better for me to just get a normal job. So that's when the job hunt started. And you've seen in previous videos, I've been looking for work. I put in hundreds of applications everywhere while in the meantime, still driving rideshare. And I actually got super lucky with this one. I actually picked up a passenger from a hotel close to my house. And I talked to this girl and I asked if the hotel was hiring. She said she didn't know if her hotel was hiring, but the one adjacent to them, they were sister properties with the Hilton brand. She said they were hiring. So I asked for the person that would be in charge, the person that I would email. I called the hotel, I got that person's email. I emailed them that day with my resume saying that I wanted to work for them. The next day I didn't hear anything back. So I picked up the phone and I called and I asked for that person and she said that she would email me back. She actually ended up calling me later that day and scheduled an interview for the next day. Now, for those of you that don't know, I've been in hotels my entire life. My parents bought a hotel when I was seven years old and I've literally worked in hotels my whole life and I went to college for hotels. So once I went into this interview, they saw that it was a no brainer because I had ridiculous amounts of experience and I was going in for an entry level job. Now I wanna emphasize this a little bit. I hate hotels. I hate working in hotels. I hate staying in hotels they irritate me because I've spent so much time in them. I see the angry customers. I see them yelling at the front desk staff, knowing that it's not their fault, complaining about the thread count of their pillows, complaining that there's only 65 options for breakfast instead of 75 at the other hotel they stayed at. Literally hotels, they just, oh, I really don't like them. But I needed a job because I needed money to provide for my family. And as a man, as a provider for your family, you need to do what you need to do to get things done. So I sucked it up, I took that job, and I started working. Now, for me to tell you that I was miserable at this job would be the understatement of the millennium. Going through the training of a hotel chain is ridiculous. It's all the same. They cookie cutter responses for all transactions, and it's just it's the most brainwashing, nonsensical, ungenuine way to do customer service. Like having to say a customer's name three times within each guest interaction is absurd to me. That immediately feels fake. I digress. So since January 1st, I've been putting out a YouTube video personally to build my own personal brand, to build my YouTube channel, to build my steady income stream on the internet and every single day I was making a video from January 1st. Now, as you can see on my channel, my videos don't get very many views. I get 100, I get 300, I get 500, but I made one video after I got off of work in the parking lot, in the back of the hotel, and I made a video on the things I like and the things I don't like about Poland. I don't know why, but I appreciate it. That video went semi-viral. 
It has over 100,000 views right now and over 1,500 comments. So it got really, really, really popular. Through that video, a lot of people reached out to me, specifically the place that I'm working at right now. This person emails me and he says, hey, I saw your video on YouTube about Poland. Would you like to meet up? Just out of sheer curiosity, I wanted to meet with this person. So I agreed to meeting and over the next few days, it was kind of radio silence. And then I emailed him back, no response. Then I did my online detective work and found him on Instagram. I messaged him on Instagram and I was like, hey, I emailed you, what's up? Do you still wanna meet? And he says, absolutely, I'm flying back from Malta next week. My secretary is gonna call you and we'll set something up. Later that day, I got a phone call. We set up the interview for the next day. I met them at a very, very fancy restaurant. I was super nervous, but I am an interview champion, self-proclaimed of course, and I do interviews differently. I don't talk about the standard cookie cutter, what are your greatest strengths and weaknesses. I like to get into deep, deep topics of conversation. I like to get into where you started, where are you from, what drove you to this industry, and in that way, an interview becomes a conversation. You don't have sweat dripping off of your armpits, you're not stressed because you're simply having a conversation with another human being. You level the playing field. Instead of you, potential employee and employer, you level it out to two human beings. So they liked what they heard. The next day I went in for like a trial day kind of brainstorm because the job was in marketing. We sat down and discussed different strategies that could work, different video ideas, ways to build the brand, ways to promote on social media, basically all things that I do for my YouTube channel. I take a video, I siphon off the audio, I put that as a podcast, I transcribe the audio into written word, I put out a blog, I post on Twitter, I post on Instagram, I post on stories, and using that exact same strategy strategy to build the brand of this new company. So obviously they like what they saw, they liked my strategies, and they hired me. Now remember how I described how I felt about working in hotels? It is literally the exact opposite working here. Every single day I come in with a plan to create videos, to create podcasts, to create blogs. Our group sits all together and it's a creative space. We have a graphic designer, we have the marketing manager, we have the social media gurus, we have the web designers, and we all work in this creative circle, bouncing ideas off of each other. Anytime there's a problem, we all get together and we solve that problem together. Okay, take this for example. When I was at the hotel, I would be working for one hour. I would look at the clock on the computer and I'd think, oh my God, I have to be here for another seven hours. Here, within my first week of work, on Thursday, I was working all day, getting super into my work. I look at the clock and it's 3.15 p.m., which means I get off of work in 45 minutes and I couldn't believe that time had gone by so fast and I thought, dang, I wish I could stay here for another two hours and finish this project. So the moral of my story, thank you for listening by the way, I know it was long, but it's super interesting to me and I hope it's interesting to you. The moral of my story is, do the things that you want to do. For me, it was building my YouTube channel. I put in all of my hard work and effort into that YouTube channel to grow something for myself. Through this hard work came opportunity. And without me being actually aware of what an opportunity is, I would have never seen it and I would have never jumped on it. But by simply responding to an email that somebody sent me from creating a YouTube video, I landed my dream job. I just finished building out this studio for them. I record videos every single day for them. They've given me all the tools that I need. I have lights, I have backdrops, I have microphones, I have a computer, I have a work phone. This space allows me to use my creative skills to be creative. I'm so thankful and so fortunate that I have this job. And I wanna encourage you guys to work on your passions, to do the things that you actually want to do, and always, always keep an ear to the ground for your next opportunity. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you got some value out of it. I hope you guys enjoyed my story. Please like this video if you liked it. Subscribe for more videos like this, and I will see you in the next one.